In this video, I'm going to show you my six step process to prepare your fabric for a happier cross stitch. Hey there, this is Sarah with The Notorious Needle and I want to empower you to break the rules of conventional cross stitch so you can make whatever you want. Now, do you have to prepare your fabric for cross stitch? No, your cross stitch will still get done even if you don't do the prep work. However, you will save yourself time and frustration if you follow these six simple steps. When would you prepare your fabric for cross stitch? After you've already picked out your pattern, but before you make that first stitch. Step one, plan your FFO. Now in cross stitch, we love our abbreviations. FFO stands for fully finished object. If you know what you're going to do with your finished project, it'll go a long way towards helping you prepare your fabric and making sure that you have enough room to do what you want. Number two, wash your hands. Before you handle any of your cross stitch materials, you should always wash your hands if you can. Do you have to? Again, no, you don't. If you're one of those rare cross stitchers who only has enough materials to get one project done at a time, you're probably fine. But if you want to keep all of your textiles in tip top shape, wash your hands before you handle them. Number three, cut your fabric to the right size. If your cross stitch fabric came as part of a kit, you can skip this step. But if you're providing your own fabric, you need to make sure that it's the right size. Here's where planning that FFO comes into play. So how much fabric do you need to stitch in a hoop? First, start with the stitching space. This will be listed on your pattern as the height and width of the space covered with your stitches. Then pick a hoop that's bigger than your stitching space. Next, take another two inches on all sides of the hoop so you have enough fabric to finish in the hoop. That means adding at least four inches to the height, two on top and two on the bottom, and four inches to the width, two on the left and two on the right. Now, my mom always tells me, Sarah, this is way too much fabric. But my mom also still cuts her fabric too small for how she wants to frame it. <laughs> Sorry, mom, sold you out. It's easier to start with a bigger piece of fabric and stitch it and then cut it down but once it's cut, you can't add more fabric. So err on the side of bigger pieces. Number four, prevent your fabric from fraying. The traditional method is to sew. And here you see an example of a blanket stitch. You could also sew this on your sewing machine using a zigzag stitch. I have a few no sew methods that I recommend to secure your fabric from fraying. The fastest and easiest way is to use pinking shears. The pinking shears will cut your fabric in a zigzag pattern and prevent fraying. Another way to secure your fabric is to use tape. I prefer painter's tape. You can also use masking tape. You don't want to use duct tape. You want a low stick tape that you can take off when you're done. Another way to secure your fabric edges from fraying without sewing is to use a fabric sealant or glue like Fray Check. You just put it on the edges, let it dry, and you're ready to go. Number five, find the center of your fabric. Finding the center of your fabric before you cross stitch is an easy way to help you get started stitching in the middle. It makes it a breeze when you're framing. First, fold the fabric in half. Fold the fabric in half again. You can take a needle and mark the center, pushing the needle or pin through the corner of the fabric that has no edges showing, only folds. When you unfold your fabric, you have the center marked and ready to go. Number six, place your fabric in an embroidery hoop. If you're a beginner stitcher, this really helps to keep the fabric nice and taut and makes it a lot easier to stitch on. The most common type of embroidery hoop is a screw tension hoop. First, loosen the screw and separate the outer and inner pieces of the embroidery hoop. Place the inner piece of the hoop on a flat surface. Center your fabric on top of the inner hoop. Then place the outer piece of the hoop over your fabric so that it's on top of the inner piece. Push the outer piece down over the inner piece until it slides down around the inner piece of the hoop and the fabric is between them. 
Last, tighten the tension screw at the top of the embroidery hoop. There's a couple of other ways you can prepare your fabric for cross stitch. You can use a Q-snap instead of an embroidery hoop and use a grime guard instead of securing your edges. Another popular way to prepare your fabric for cross stitch is gritting. Now gritting is when you use a marker or a pen to mark up your fabric every 10 squares to make it look more like your pattern chart. And this helps with counting and prevents miscounting mistakes so you have to pull out less stitches. To go more in depth on these and other topics about how to prepare your fabric for cross stitch, go ahead and check out the link to the article below. Stitch on!